Hello there YouTube, this is Necrostevo and it's time for week 5 in the Alpha Pokemon League. Week 5 is up against the Atlanta Shocks, whom are coached by Easy Bake. Of course, if you do not want to watch the full team builder, even though these never take very long, feel free to jump right to the battle by clicking the little denotation in the description. In the meantime, let's get into this matchup. We can see that Easy Bake has a team of Magirna, whom is his Z user, Gudra, Nidoqueen, Blastoise, Rotom, Victini, Porygon 2, Chestnut, Braviary, Lipard, and Mega Glalie. And wow, what a bad matchup this is this week. Um, once again, I had to be a little bit uh, unorthodox with my team building, because not only is Magirna a very big wild card to play against, um, you'll probably never see me draft it because it's a legendary Pokemon and I don't have that access to very many Magirna. Uh, but it's it just has such great coverage and it can run Shift Gear or Calm Mind or it can have the Steelium Z Flash Cannon or the Twinkle Tackle or it can use Gigavolt Havoc or... Ah uh, man, very tough to prep for Magirna. With that being said, that's not the biggest threat he has. Um, it's very likely that he'll bring his Magirna alongside Porygon 2 and Chestnut. Uh, and even the Mega Glalie, all a big pain for my team, and, and he can have access to every single type of entry hazard between the Native Queen, the Chestnut, and um, the Native Queen and the Chestnut. Yeah, that covers all the entry hazards. Granted, he doesn't have very good removal himself, but his team is much more offensively inclined. Uh, he has his Blastoise for rapid spinning, but I don't know that he'll need to rapid spin too much. So how do we combat? that really, really offensive presence that he has. Well, we do that with the team that we had this week. So up first, you can see I have a Choice Scarf Garchomp with Outrage, Earthquake, Stealth Rock, and Fire Blast. Uh, I went with a Naive Nature so that Fire Blast power isn't dampened. Um, Choice Scarf Rocks is a little bit unorthodox, um, but if I have an opportunity to set up Stealth Rocks, that makes things a lot easier for my team. Um, Outrage and Earthquake are just solid coverage for his entire team. Most of the time I'm going to be clicking Earthquake anyways, but uh, Outrage is just nice to take out the Breviary or the Rotom if needed. After that, um, oh, also Garchom is one of our several checks to a setup version of Magirna um, or even a setup version of Gudra. Uh, Garchom can take a single Ice Shard from Mega Glalie, especially if he's running like a Naive Nature to get access to Freeze Dry. But if he's running a Jolly Nature, it's kind of a roll. And if he's running Adamant, he will always KO me. Uh, this team changed a lot, actually, in my team building. Originally, I had Sand Slash and Tyranitar in those first two slots to try to outspeed his whole team. But I was worried about being able to keep up the weather. So we're just going to go with something a little more reliable. In slot number two, we have our Araquanid. And once again, Liquidation, Leech Life, Lunge, and Mirror Coat. You're not seeing a lot of variation in that because it works. Uh, particularly against this team, with a Salt Vest that gives me a soft check to Magirna, a very soft check to Blastoise, and with the max HP investment, I get another soft check to Mega Glalie. Uh, it does suffer if he decides to bring his Braviary. I'm hoping he won't. But since I have brought a Raquinid every week, completely viable. Depending on the type of Victini he has, it may or may not stomp my Araquanid too. Uh, Araquanid can also take any one hit from Nidoqueen. Uh, Gudra can, can run Power Whip, which will hurt a lot, so I don't really want to run into that. Um, and I can also take any one hit from Rotom. Again, these are not things that I want to take hits from, but it can, which is nice. Uh, I can basically spam Liquidation. I will use um, Lunge, depending on which Pokemon he brings, because catching, uh, I could see, for example, I guess, Chestnut coming in to block a liquidation, and Lunge will lower its attack stat, which will make it a lot easier to swap something into the situation. Now, granted, liquidation might lower the defense, but that's only a, a percentage chance of that happening, whereas Lunge will always lower his attack, which will make things a lot easier for the next Pokemon coming in. Speaking of the next Pokemon, we have Arcanine. This week, we're running the Phytinium Z with Cloth Combat. I think I just bit my tongue with the close combat move. Uh, all Out Pummeling, once again, is just solid neutral coverage against this team, and the things that don't mind taking an All Out Pummeling don't enjoy the other coverage moves here. Intimidate is just to soften things up a little bit 
for a possibly physically offensive Gudra, Victini, a Chestnut, Braviary, or Mega Glalie. And this is a situation where I have to really manage my team's HP because I can't just swap things in over and over and over again. I might change Will-O-Wisp to Morning Sun in the last slot because I don't know if I'm going to be running weather or not, honestly, in this matchup. This is just what I have now, and I wanted to narrate this before the battle. Um, but yeah, uh, with the Phytinium Z, that allows me to have a really strong hit on Porygon 2, and then finish it off with a close combat, hopefully. Or depending on the spread, I might be able to finish it with a Flare Blitz. Uh, hopefully it's not a situation where Porygon can come in and trace my Intimidate, because that will be annoying. But yeah, I am hopeful to get off some good hits there, and will -O is just to punish Chestnut that tries to use Spiky Shield against me if he tries to stay in, and you leech life me and then you use Spiky Shield, then he will get burned. I am not putting up with those guessing shenanigans. Uh, the burn is also nice from Mega Glalie. Uh, to a lesser extent, the, um, the, the Gudra, uh, if he is running a physical one, and then I can status the Magirna too, if for some reason like my attack stat gets really lowered. Um, but of course Magirna can't be toxic being a steel type, so that's kind of where that is. Uh, these last three Pokemon are somewhat likely to change. They've changed a lot in my team building. So originally I had Tyranitar with Sand Slash, uh, Illumis with Kabutops, and then the, um, and then I had my Serena there for spinning. But I decided all out offense might be a little bit better for this matchup. If I just don't give my opponent a chance to set up his Magirna, to set up a bunch of entry hazards with Nidoqueen or Porygon or Chestnut or Paralyzed Things or Porygon rather, I might fare a lot better. So in that line of thinking, uh, Kabutops with Illumines once again, Rain Dance support from Illumines will also allow Araquanid to be a lot more threatening. And Kabutops can 2-hit KO every single thing on his team. Uh, I won't have a chance to set up a Swords Dance. I ran a lot of scenarios just in my head because I wanted to do the same thing with Sand Slash and set up a Swords Dance at some point and then go ham. But I really think the, the best approach here is going to be bring it in, hit something as hard as you can. Uh, Aerial Ace on Kabutops is just there for Chestnut. I don't want to be walled by that thing. And if I don't have Aerial Ace, I will be walled by that thing. Uh, otherwise, Waterfall and Stone Edge are the main moves going to be used with Superpower there just for Porygon 2. I decided to put Light Screen on my Illumines to soften hits from Nidoqueen, Magirna, Blastoise, Rotom, and possibly Victini. Uh, also, Illumines is a great tech switch in to his Lipard, and to a lesser extent, it comes in for free against Blastoise. Um, and in those situations, I can set up a live screen, I can set up my Rain Dance, I can also Toxic them. I can't Toxic the Live Hard, but I can U-Turn against it, which is really, really nice. I decided to go with Toxic this week over Thunder Wave, because generally his team is around the same speed or slower than mine. And with my Rain up, I outspeed him anyway, so instead of trying to slow him down, Toxic is going to be great for whittling things down over time. Uh, and then in the final slot, we have Rowdy Rough Boys, the Dodrio, once again. Roaring Choice Banded because I don't, again, I don't think I'll have a chance to set up a Swords Dance. Um, and Brave Bird is just really good against his team, bar the Magirna and the Rotom. Everything else just gets kind of murked by it. Uh, early game, if I have an opportunity to bring in Dodrio, I will be going for a knockoff because I don't see Magirna wanting to switch in on Dodrio. I, I don't think that would be too great of a play, generally. And then should uh, Mega Glalie get out of control, or if the Victini is Scarf and he's just causing mayhem, I have Bandit Quick Attack in the back to do a decent chunk to anything as well. So that is the very tentative team. It is somewhat likely that I will change this team at least a little bit before the matchup, but this makes the most sense right now. So we're gonna go with this right now. So guys, thanks so much for the the view and watching the team builder. Let me know before you, like if you wanna just put in the comments now, uh, whether or not you think I should have gone with Tyranitar and Sand in this matchup, or um, with Sand Slash rather. Uh, Cause I really wanted to bring Sand Slash to his first match, but it just seemed like the damage output from him was a little bit middling and I needed so much speed to outspeed things. Whereas Kabutops, I at least speed tie with a lot of things. Um, even without rain, so 
I don't know. Let me know what you think. And let's get right into the battle. Alrighty guys, so thank you so much for watching the team builder. If you didn't, a very quick rundown of the team is going to be my Scarf Garchomp, Assault Vesta Raquinid, Fighting MZ, Zed, I guess, uh, Arcanine, All Out Offensive Kabutops, Rain Dance Supportive, Physically Defensive Elemis with Light Screen, and Choice Banded Dodrio. We can see that Easy Bake didn't bring um, a few of the things that I thought it would. Like, I definitely thought we were going to see Porygon 2, for example, because I don't have a fighting type. But that makes things easier to deal with. And looking at his team, I was like, I could see him leading with the Chestnut or the Nidoqueen to get up entry hazards. Uh, or Victini, if it's Scarfed, um, just to try to hit something hard from the start. So, with those being his possible leads, that means that my best lead overall was going to be Araquanid. Um, if he did lead Chestnut, then I get a free switch into my Arcanine. Everything else, I can just attack. Uh, even the boss toys, I could just stay in and attack that because I wouldn't want to risk a Scald Burn switching out to something else. So with that in mind, let's jump into this battle and see how we did in our week five matchup. So we do lead a Raquanid. I'm Assault Vested, so even anything Nidoqueen wants to go for here won't be able to KO me. He gets up his Stealth Rock, which I am happy to trade for no more entry hazards from Nidoqueen. No Toxic Spikes. Now I just have to worry about Spikes from Chestnut. I swap directly out into my Garchomp because I figured he'd go for Spikes or Leech Seed, but he goes for Substitute which means that he is probably Salak Berry Belly Drum. And I'm okay with that too, because after the Belly Drum, he's going to die to another Fire Blast because he doesn't know that I'm Scarfed. Uh, this is a little bit of an oversight on the rules though, because he thought that I had to have Mega Garchomp. Once again, in this league, you do not have to bring the Mega, and even if you do, you don't have the Mega on the first turn. That's what makes Mega Garchomp such a powerful pick in this league, uh, which is hard to say in other leagues. Victini comes in, and not knowing what his moveset is, I go out to my Arcanine, because it does not do very much in this matchup at all, like I don't even have extreme speed on it. Um, not even my Z move is useful. So I just go straight for Rain Dance here, in case he's not Scarfed. I was really hoping he'd Scarf, he was Scarfed, so that I could set up a lot more, but since he is, the Rain Dance, um, since he's not Scarfed, Rain Dance allows me to take the, the V Create from him, set up a Light Screen, set up my Rain, now go boot tops, can really mess some things up. I do need a little bit of prior damage on the Blastoise, so I go out into my Dodrio first. Um, he actually doesn't take that Banded Brave Bird as well as I thought he would, which means he might be invested or have some speed and special attack or something like that. But in this range, Waterfall kills him. Uh, Waterfall has a chance to one-shot all of his teammates, actually, depending on their spreads. He goes out to Magirna, and unless he is uh, Electrium Z... Thunderbolt, he can't KO me through the light screen. Flash Cannon doesn't do anything, and the light screen wears off right after I needed it the most, which is perfect. And so we are able to take down Magirna too. Uh, as Glalie comes in, I could kill it with a superpower, um, and so I went for superpower. That was a misplay. My best play was definitely going for a waterfall because I would have had that flinch chance and my defenses wouldn't have been lowered. Uh, but I just decided to stay in here as he goes into Victini. I think it was a misplay for him to swap into Victini too, because if I did go for a Waterfall on the Kabuto, on the Glalie, it would have killed his um, it would have killed his Victini coming in. But he may have just made a really good beat on predictions right there too. Um, right here, as he Mega evolves, he doesn't go for Ice Shard, which I definitely think would have been his best play. Not only would he have not touched me. Because, uh, you know, the percentages on Smogon sometimes uh, will round one way or the other, depending on where you are. But it ends up not mattering, because as he goes for Explosion, which is the one move I forgot to prep for on Mega Glalie, my Araquanid does live it with 2%. Phew, very, very close there. That was a really fast battle. Um, just That's kind of what you get with hyper-offensive teams like this. Uh, but it was a very enjoyable battle too. We've had two battles now where things came down to the very, very last Pokemon. And I knew Araquanid could live any hit from Mega Glalie. Like, even if he had Freeze Dry for super effective damage, I'd, even, I'd take less from that because of my Assault Vest. But the explosion brought things very close there. So this is another victory for the Eternity Enders. Thank you very much, Easy Bake, for the battle. He actually has a channel that he uploads to. 
It's my understanding that he will be taking a break from things because he has some life things going on. But I do think you should check him out. As you can see, he's a very competent battler with some interesting sets. And uh, so I'll leave his information in the description. And um, yeah, I hope you guys stay tuned for our week six battle. That battle is going to be late, just like this one was, because my opponent for week six has things going on as well. So we'll get that battle up as soon as we're able to. But in the meantime, thank you all so much for watching this battle. And I hope you guys are having a fantastic week. I will talk to you all very soon. Goodbye now.